it's Risa Pizza. Today's topic is to talk about how to design a great micro interaction in five steps. In this video, I will do a quick intro on what micro interaction is, and then we'll share my screen to show you the design process I go through step by step. So make sure you watch until the end. So what's micro interaction again? Micro interaction is a single use subtle visual cue that draws your attention to a change in status. And we're surrounded by them. I'm sure you've seen this example from Facebook and this from Twitter and this from Medium. They're all trying to communicate the same thing, which is you're liking something. But they managed to make it very unique and add a little bit of their brand into it and make it super delightful. This is an example when the user swipes a card and the UI tells them if the transaction was successful or not. Without that feedback, there's no way user can know. And therefore, microinteraction improves the usability and it's an essential part of user experience. In real life, most things are moving, right? So if you wanted to design a product that gives users instant feedback, you need to know how to design with microinteraction. So when it comes to microinteraction, what's the most important thing? Is it about being able to use complex tool? No, it's about understanding the purpose. Now let's get into the fun part. Here are the simple five steps that I go through to design a microinteraction. Now let's get to it. Before we get into the details, please subscribe to the Risa Pizza channel because I'm going to talk more about product design and how to work effectively with the engineers. Let's say you're designing a chatbot where you can order coffee online. So right now it takes at least 10 seconds for it to respond. The problem here is that it feels too long and the user doesn't know what is going on, so they tend to exit out from the conversation. So the challenge here is to clearly communicate the state and make the experience more engaging. Step two, break it down. Micro interactions is all about giving feedback to the user what is going on in the computer's head. It's really important to figure out the steps that the computer goes through so that we know exactly what screens we need to design. This is where I bring in Sketchbook to jot down notes. The user sends a message, the bot receives the message and then checks the stock. And then they come up with a response. When they come up with the response, they send the message back. For step three, check the stocks. I think this is where it takes the longest, so we need a way to engage users while we make them wait. And then step five should be the most delightful part of the experience. So how might we make that fun? <laughs> step three, look for inspirations. What I usually do is I open up Google Chrome and start searching products that have solved a similar problem. So of course, the first example that comes into my mind is the type in indicator in iMessage. They do a very elegant animation where it shows that the other person is typing. Another example that comes into my mind is Uber. Um, Uber does a great job of updating the user with the state they're in. They will tell you when they are six minutes away, if the driver canceled you when they're close by. This might be an experience we could simulate in our coffee bot prototype. Dribble is a great source of inspirations. What I usually do is I type in um, keywords like loading, confirmation. Um, yep, they have a lot of different type of typing indication. Um, and then I usually uh, organize all the inspirations in a particular bucket like this on Dribble. So if you are ever interested, please follow me on Dribble. This one is very interesting. They visualize how many people are writing at the same time. This one is a really delightful experience where the dot 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 changes into a heart. <laughs> Okay, so now we are juiced up with all the inspirations. Let's go in to the next fun part. Step four. This is the most exciting part, generating ideas. Usually I do this on a sketchbook, write down all the frames that I have to design. And in this prototype, we want to focus on the loading state. So we're gonna focus on these two frames. When I was looking at the typing indicator from iMessage, I thought it would be really cool if we could make the dot 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 a coffee beans and then make them wiggle a little bit. Another idea I had was inspired by Uber. 
about um, giving the user updates, right? So what if we can make the bot say, looking for the milk and gathering beans, or maybe picking up the best beans. That might add a little bit of personality to the bot. It's almost like being at a coffee shop and seeing the barista pick out the coffee, pick the milk and brew it in front of you. It makes this experience so much more fun and delightful. The last step is to build the interactive prototype. I usually like to start off with Figma. First, I tried to create that coffee beans uh, vector so I could wiggle it and jiggle it. However, then I quickly noticed that it was too small so it wasn't working for me. So then I went with the simpler version which updates the user what is going on behind the scenes. Um, once I was done with the frames, I, will, I usually open up the Protopie tool. Uh, Protopy is a great tool. It's super easy to learn. You can add a trigger and apply the effects. It could be, you know, changing the sizes of a element or opacity. You can even change the text. Protopy is great because you can export that file with an URL and just send it to your engineer on the PMs. It's super great. So voila, this is the outcome of today's prototyping session. Uh, you can see the loading state and how it transforms into the bubbles. I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> so what did you think? I know it seems like a lot of work, but if you do it right, it'll definitely surprise your team and bring delight to your users and differentiate your product from your competitors. So if you have any questions or ideas to improve the coffee bot prototype we made together, please leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.